in the studio, in the house. For all those who are watching us live streaming, we thank God that you are there. For those watching us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all over social media, we will share the sermon, the service. And all those who are watching us, to share, 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 throw a party. Uh, they, they could even text in church. Uh, they just go and tell them they are, they are live, coming from Global Life Church. Just go to Ora Hazel Facebook and they will see us live right there. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house this morning. Hallelujah. We had an awesome week. Hallelujah. And God has been faithful to us. God's been faithful to us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory be to God. Lord, we just thank you for today. Thank you, Father, for this is a blessing. This is the day you have made. And we are going to rejoice and be able to be glad in this day. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Our scripture reading this morning will be taken from Psalm 34. And it will read from verses uh, 1 uh, to verse 7. The word of God tells us, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him, and delivers them. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's stand for our prayer. So, Father, this morning we just thank you that we come into your sanctuary to worship, to honor you, and to adore you. We thank you, Father. We welcome of your Holy Spirit in the midst of your people. And so, Father, as we come and we gather in the house, around the house, in the parking lot, uh, in our own houses and in cars, just to celebrate this time that you have given us life, an abundant life, we pray that this uh, time of ministry and worship will be a time of healing, restoration, and deliverance. And, Father, we thank you and the salvation. No, Father, we thank you for uh, the worship. We thank you for the praise. We thank you. You're going to give us the strength and the energy to open our mouths and to give you worship and praise in this sanctuary and out of this sanctuary. Lord, your word declares it's a letter. The redeemed of the Lord say so. So, Father, we're going to say so in our, in our praise, in our worship, and by the word. We thank you for uh, touching your woman servant, Dr. Leah Vanderpool, of come by just to drop a word. We pray, Father, that, uh, Lord God, your, her tongue will be a tongue of the ready writer, full of fire, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the prophetic to drop a word into our spirit in this season. Can we say hallelujah under the mask? And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for a God movement in this place this morning. And everybody in agreement with the prayer, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So at this time, we, you may be seated and you will stand again and if you feel so to worship, you could walk, you could run around. Hallelujah. Those at home, share, share the word of God. And we welcome all of everyone again. God bless you.
and seated and standing and just worship Him. Worship Him. If you feel the Holy Spirit, just release. Just release your prayer language. Just sing it to the hermit. Just release it. Just release it. <laughs>
Glory be to God. Just gonna give everybody a good shout out. The woman of God, she has a plane, she has to drop a word. And catch a plane, I like that. So once you drop it, you can't catch it. So you're gonna be troubling the house. But this is my wife. I'm gonna give her a kiss on some Sundays. continue in a space of worship hallelujah glory to God we thank God for the opportunity to minister on this morning we thank God for the viewing audience on today but one of the things that I love about God is worship transcends it moves us in places and if there's anybody in here who's ever loaded a gun you know that you've got to cock it back in order to thrust it forward and I want you to know that your worship brings you into that place that God can thrust you forward. That God can do what he wants to do in your life. We thank God for the worship on this morning. 
Jesus has set the atmosphere for God to do what he wants to do. And as I was standing there, the Lord brought this scripture to mind. Genesis 47 and 27. Now the Israelites settled in Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired uh, property there and were fruitful and increased greatly in number. And I want us to understand that though the world is in a pandemic, the saints of God were living in Goshen. And nothing shall come nigh our dwelling once we live in the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God has ordained praise for us to silence the foe and the avenger, to silence lack and to silence confusion and chaos, to silence sickness and diseases, to silence the things that come against us in this world. God is fighting for us. God is standing for us. I want you to know that God is increasing his people in this season. God is opening doors that could not be opened in another season. We're in an unprecedented time in the kingdom of God. I want you to know if you're not avid and studying your word, please read through it. We've got a book called 90 Day Journey Through the Scriptures that wasn't a plug. But I want you to know that we've got to have a grip on the word of God. Because you realize that every time God made a major move on the behalf of the people of God, there was great chaos that happened in the land. And when we see the chaos in the land, we are to rejoice that God is getting ready to move mightily on our behalf. I want you to know that when the pandemic started, I began to make requests being made unto the Lord. And one of the requests that I made, Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want to keep renting even in this place that you placed me. And I want you to know a month and a half ago, I closed on a house. I want you to know that I was doing different things and I'm an accountant by trade. And I began to ask God, I said, God, I want to return back to being bivocational. I need you to open up a consistent door. I want you to know that God has opened the door. And they are not only opened the door, but they are paying me at the rate that I requested. I want you to know that this is a time that God scaled back stuff so that the saints of God to step right in. That's how I love it. To what God and what you've been praying for. scripture when they have the tabernacle is that they had to go in. They cleanse themselves. But just as the priests of the old, we are a royal priesthood. And we go into the holies of holies. But what is it that we've got to have? We've got to have the spirit of God in our praise and our worship so that God can consume it. I came out to tell you all today, as Pastor Apostle said, I do have a flight to catch, but I want to be able to share and be in obedience. But I want you to know that the Lord has sent me by to tell you that we are under an open heaven. We are under the open heaven that God has declared at any time in Scripture that there is an open heaven. It means that God is getting ready to manifest. Every time that there was a manifestation in Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1, it says the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. As the heavens are open, God is dropping strategy. He is dropping visions. He is giving us coordinates of what to do. In Revelations 4 and 1, it says a door standing open in heaven when the heavens open and the voice of a trumpet was heard and I want you to know that there are doors that God is opening that are standing opening on our behalf we're standing under an open heaven Matthew 3 and 16 the baptism of Jesus and the Bible says the heavens were open and there was a declaration of who he was to those that are around and in this season, what God is doing, as there's an open heaven, God is declaring to you first 
who you are in the kingdom of God. He is declaring to others around you who you are so that God can get the glory out of your lives. We are in an open heaven. Hallelujah. And at the time that there is a revelation, and whenever there's a point of revelation, prophecy is fulfilled in your hearing. And God wants you to know on today that there are doors open. There are strategies open. There are revealings open. Hallelujah. As we were singing one of the worship songs on this morning, I didn't turn around to see you all, but you are a little bit too subdued. When they sing that song in Africa, they are, they are jumping and they are shouting because they realize that this great big God is coming to see about us. I don't know about anybody else, but would you believe two weeks ago I was hit by an 18-wheeler truck in the back of my car, and I'm standing before you. Hallelujah! 18 wheels in the back of a four-wheel car, and I'm standing before you two weeks later, declaring the word of God. It is only God. And when we're excited, then we can pull them up. I like how Apostle said, Will the church come out of the closet? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We've got to stand and declare the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the earth is groaning and it's moaning for the sons of God to stand up. We got to stand up, saints. We got to stand up, saints. We got to stand up, saints. We just don't come to church just as a place to gather. But we are here because we're standing in agreement with God, but with one another of what God is about to do. We decree and declare that there are open doors over each one of you under the sound of my voice. That there are strategies that God is releasing. I see businesses arising. I see clients coming. I see resources coming. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It is the will of God that we prosper in this season. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When the spirit of God is upon us. There's a right and present time for our hearing where we can hear the scriptures and we receive a revelation. And that is the point that prophecy is fulfilled. So I want you to know when prophecy is declared, after we release it, it has nothing to do with what we say. You've got to activate it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But while you grab your Bibles, I'm all flowing in one. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank God on this morning. Father, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy, for your loving kindness. God, I thank you right now for walking with me, being with me, and declaring your word on today, oh God. Give me your strength in the name of Jesus. God, let your ministering angels be in the midst of us, oh God. Not my will, but thine will be done. I decrease that you might increase in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for the island. We thank you for this territory, oh God. God, that you are releasing your angels over it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, that your protecting power would be over the islands, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray, oh God, for those that are leading the islands, oh God. Those that are in governmental positions, oh God. We pray right now, oh God. For those that are arising out of your kingdom, uh, that are called to the, the area of government, God, that they would stand in integrity, uh, God, that they would stand in the mandate, uh, God, that you've given them for this territory. God, we pray right now, uh, God, that you would release your fivefold agents in this territory, uh, in the name 
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, release the apostles, release the prophets, release the evangelists, release the pastors. God, release the teachers, oh God. And God, together as your hand, the fivefold ministry gifts of this territory. God, turn the islands upside down on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, God, we look to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, God, that you would do exceeding and abundantly above all that we may ask or think your will be forever accomplished within our lives. In Jesus' name. God, we bless you. We bless your name. Isaiah, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Hallelujah. Sometimes I'm torn between a worship But as I teach up to my students It's impossible to operate in the spirit of God without worship Open heaven God, open heaven You are great oh God you're wonderful, you're mighty, oh God. You are the great I am, El Shaddai. Jehovah Rapha, oh God. Jehovah Rabashe. Jehovah Tiskanu. God, we bless you. Mm. God, visit the sick and the shut in right now. Let your spirits hover over them right now. Heal, deliver, and set free. I don't know who it is, whether it's in the building or online, but you're experiencing a pain on your left side. I want you to put your hand there. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is visiting you and healing in that area. We decree and declare healing. Uh, total healing in your mind. Uh, healing in your body. Uh, healing, healing, healing. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Giving honor to Apostle and Pastor Hazel. Thank you for the opportunity giving honor to the apostles that are Banson that are on their honeymoon right now. It was my pleasure to officiate their nuptials and God is definitely doing a work in the kingdom. And for those of us that are believing God for spouses, we are taking hold of the testimony and the fulfillment of the word that we saw on yesterday. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that whenever God sends one, he sends one that will enhance our ministry and enhance our lives. And we won't take any wooden nickels. Uh, but we are waiting on God's man servant uh, to bless our lives. I want to pray right now for every single, whether man or female, that's desiring a mate. Uh, we pray, oh God, that God would uh, go see about us and cause our names to ring in the atmosphere and cause the coordinates that come to us, oh God, that that man or that woman uh, would receive the coordinates uh, to be able to get us to that appointed time, uh, for that appointed meeting, uh, so that the will of God can be accomplished uh, even 
even in that time. Hallelujah. For those that are content, we pray for your continual contentment. But we thank God for your will being accomplished in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But I want to stop by with Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11. And it is a very familiar passage of scripture that we have heard over and over. But I want us to understand that it ties to what I precedingly said about there being an open heaven. And I want us to understand that the scripture says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And for a thought on today, I want to remind you when God thinks, hallelujah, when God thinks, you may accept your seats, hallelujah, glory be to God. As I said that we are in very unprecedented times right now, that the world have been in a topsy-turvy, not just us locally, but those around the world. This is one of the first times in history that there are things that has transpired in one area and it has traveled across the continent and is impacting us not just on a local level, but it is impacting us on a global level. This is the first time that something happens over in China and it impacts what we receive and what we can get here in the USA or in the island. Islands. I work for a company that we are still awaiting a cargo that was ordered back in December and January because there has been a delay on exports. There's, there's been a delay in the imports that are coming in and out of our country. This is the first time in a time that the world has had to take a pause and they've had to look up. When we went through the time of being sheltered in place, this was one of the first time that the world on a whole looked up and said God what is going on whether saved or unsaved they were wondering what is going on and because anytime you start messing with the pocket of the world they somehow know how to turn to God there were companies that were making millions and came to a screeching halt and they had to stop and wonder what is going on what manner of man is this uh, that's able to shut down the entire world. Now I'm not saying that God sent the pandemic but what I will say is that God allowed it to come into fruition. I want us to understand uh, that there are times that God will cause things to transpire because he is working on our behalf. I know that sounds like an oxymoron uh, but when we understand that when God starts shifting and moving things it it's almost like that chessboard. He's putting things in place on our, on our behalf. And one of the things that God sent me by to remind us of is that we have a compass that is not ruled by anything else but his own conditions. Uh, we have a compass within our spirit that God is able to give us the coordinate directions, whether it's north, south, east, and west, that God can tell us whether to move to the right, whether to move to the left, whether or not to stay home, whether or not to move forward. Uh, on yesterday, we celebrated, I believe it was 20 years uh, of the towers being broken down uh, or being attacked at that time. And even back then, I can tell you that it transcends. Uh, I remember I was on my way to work on that morning, uh, and I didn't feel well. And I'm one of those people that you got to actually put me down in order for me to stay down when I'm sick. And I remember that the Holy Spirit said to me, do not go to work today. I, I had to take the train, which would have been caught underneath the rubble had I gone that morning. And as I laid in the bed and I looked at the television, it looked like a movie. But when I opened my eyes and realized it was actually real time TV. And I'm saying that to say that had I gone to work that 
morning, I would have been caught in the rubble in that train underneath the towers. So what I'm sharing with you is that we've got an inside compass that God will give us the coordinates of when to move and when to go, when to stop and when not to move. And sometimes we get bent out of shape because we want to do it the way we want to do it when God is saying to hold up, wait a minute, I've got a different plan in motion. And so when we look at the scriptures, it says, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you. I don't know about you, but I love when God gets to thinking about me because there are thoughts of good and not of evil. I love when God starts thinking about me because he is looking out for my good welfare. I love when God starts thinking about me because he's putting things in place before I get there. I'm reminded even I gave the testimony on Facebook when I went to the builders in January. They said Miss Vantapool, there's going to be delays along the way because we've been delaying on bricks. We've been delayed on concrete. We've been delayed on this. I, I made a pack with uh, those that were building, I said, can we make a pact right now? Uh, he said, what is it? I said, every time that you hear about a delay, uh, I want you to give me a call or send me an email uh, because I know a man that knows how to move the impossible. Uh, and it was on schedule for a six-month uh, time, and they said, well, uh, we might not be finished by the end of July. I said, well, that's what you say, uh, but I know a man that moves the impossible. Uh, when I came in, when they were getting ready to to close on the house, I found a sign in the garage that says thank you Jesus. And I want you to know I closed on time. It made a believers out of those that were building the house that there is a God that's able to move the impossible. But we've got to understand that this inside compass moves us in the directions where we ought to go. Sometimes God will tell you to hush. I call it that hush mouth grace. Uh, sometimes we want to say something, uh, but God will say, put a zip on it. Hallelujah. It might be right, but it might not be expedient. Uh, and sometimes God will have us to close our mouths. Sometimes God will have us to close our pocketbooks. Uh, sometimes God will cause us to stay where we want to go. Sometimes he'll cause us to go where we want to stay. Uh, that is the internal compass that God is directing us and telling us where to go. So for those who want to do it your way and have it your way, this definitely isn't Burger King because when we serve the God that we serve, we've got to render it His way. And only His way will do. Can I tell you that even when He allows you and He moves to the side and lets you have your way, there comes a day that you've got to come back and you've got to say, okay, I'm going to let you do it your way. So even when you go your way, God will bring you back to the way if you want to be saved. If you want to do it his way, God will bring you right back to the spot. I'd rather stay in sync than to go off on a detour to have to go backwards. And I hear the Spirit of God saying that some of you are concerned about you being in a backward state. But that's because you've been trying to do it your way. And now that you come back and you say, God, I surrender to you. God had to put you back to the spot which was in his will. But I want you to know that delayed spot does not mean that you are denied. It just means that now you are going forward in the will of God. And don't you let the devil beat you up. Don't you let the devil run circles in your mind. Don't you let the devil make you feel like you cannot get to where God has got you to. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want you to know I was showing the picture of my sister on yesterday to my younger sister. She said, there is a God and there's hope. I hold on for God just a little bit longer. I want us to know that God has a way of giving us yes. glimpses. Yes, yes, yes. Of where he's taking yes. us. That's right. Yes, remember some time ago the Lord showed me that I would be in Dubai. I didn't know where and how I was going there. But I want to know that I got a call. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, I spoke with a sister of mine that I knew uh, from New York, and as we did what we needed to do, uh, I want you to know that come the end of the month, I'll be going to Dubai. So I want you to 
and know God will give you glimpses of where you're going and what you're going to be doing. And I'm not going to be, so to speak, preaching the gospel. I'm going for an economic conference. Okay. So I want us to know that God can put us. There are people that are in this room. There are people that are in the world. And we think that when we talk about God, it's always confound, confined to the church house. But I want you to know that God sends his agents in the government house. He sends his agents in the business house. He sends his agents in the legislative. He sends his agents even in media. He sends his agents in arts and entertainment. And we've got to understand that God has agents everywhere that affects our culture, that affects where we are. We've got to understand that even when you've been called, whatever your calling is, it is not confined to just this area in the house of God. You can be an apostle in the marketplace. You can be a prophet in the marketplace. You can evangelize. That's what I call marketing. If you've got an evangelistic anointing on your life, you've been called to market. You can market Jesus, but God has given you the skill set that's needed to market anything that they put in your hand. If you've been called to teach, you can break down what seems to be the impossible to the understanding. When you are an apostle, you bring structure and order. No matter where you are, I began to notice, notice everywhere they sent me on an assignment. It was in chaos. Jesus. Their books were in a mess. My God. And I had to bring structure. Each place God sent me. That is the mantle of the apostle. That's right. It is to bring structure. So I'm not just an apostle in the church. I'm an apostle in the marketplace. Oh, and then when they start talking about deposits, and he was saying, well, our deposits have been rather low these past couple months. I said, Holy Ghost, I'm speaking to those that will release the funds that belong to this house, to this business. I want you to know, the lady came to me, uh, I'm the CFO of, uh, of the organization, and she came to me and she said, Ms. Fantapool, uh, we got $162,000 in deposits on Monday. And she came back on Tuesday. She said, we're about 56 stuff. They have been seen. When you understand they've been getting about 10 15,000 a day and then you pray you prophesy to those and the money comes in I'm trying to get us to understand that we've got to take Jesus out of the box we've got to take Jesus just out of the church and bring Jesus to every area of our lives you got to walk on the job and sometimes this is where we mess up we go in and we think we've got to make a display. My God. My, my, my. We will walk in and we've got to find a God in the name. No, 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 no. My, my, my. You walk in because Jesus got black ops. That's what I call us. We're black ops. And black ops, whenever they send you and you never know they are in your midst, they carry out their assignment. You wonder what happened because they already did what they were sent to do. They did their assignment and they were out of the way. They didn't make an announcement. They didn't do a flag and that's one of the reasons when uh, their governments and they have ambassadors and they have people that are in the field and their, their cover is broken. That's why they move them immediately. But I want us to know that God will send us as black ops around the island, around the U.S., around the world and while we are there and when my boss found out that I I was going to Dubai. He said, well, when can I get on that plane now? Uh, but I want us to know that I'm going on the behalf of the kingdom. I'm going on the behalf that God is about to do something in this economic summit on the behalf of the kingdom of God. So when you go and when God opened doors, I want us to understand the doors are not for us to brag, but it is what God is doing to extend his territory, to extend what he is doing in the earth realm. Uh, and so I know the thoughts that I have to achieve when God gets to think it. Hallelujah. There's something great that's about to happen within our lives and when we begin to understand that even though discouragement might come, even though there are bumps in the road, I want us to understand that it's all a part of the plan. And when I was laying on my bed and I said, Lord, what are you saying to us? God said, I got a blueprint for your life. And I want you to understand, we don't have blueprints today as we did in the back in the day. There was a specific paper, and they would put the paper in a certain solution so that when they draw on it and the light hits it, that you're able to see even the minute details that were drawn in the walls. That's why whenever there's a time that they're looking and they're getting ready to look at a historical building, they don't want to see what they, we call the floor plan. They want to go back into the archives and see the blueprint 
blueprint. Uh, because there's a blueprint on top of the blueprint, on top of the blueprint, that be able to share the foundation. And on top of that, line upon line, precept upon precept, God is building our lives. Uh, and there's a blueprint. And when the light of the Holy Spirit lights on us, God begins to revelate the things in which we ought to go through, the doors in which we ought to go through. And this is why we need to keep our minds in God, that we need to always live in a state of worship, in a state of praise, because as we praise and worship, God begins to reveal what has been hidden. And I might be dating myself a little bit, but I couldn't remember what it was called. But I remember when I was a child, there was this little uh, thing that looked like a binocular. It was a toy. And, and there was a little pinwheel thing that with uh, the little yes. negatives. And as yes. you turn the thing over, you're able to yes. see a view master. And so you're able to see the image and it moves as you click. And I want you to know uh, that even though it seems like you're looking through and you're looking at one frame, I want you to know God is clicking and turning to the next frame in your life. And God is bringing you to the next view. But when we look through the eyes of God, we're able to see the full picture of what God is doing within our lives. We're able to see the hidden things that the enemy don't want us to look at. The hidden things that the enemy wished that we could not see. That would keep us outside yes. of the will of God. Yes. Everything yes. is that appears is not in the natural. It is uh, not always what it looks like in the spiritual realm. We've got to understand that what's happening mm -hmm. is not always what's going on. We look at things at face value and we never see the spiritual of what's going on in the midst of us. And when we begin to lose sight of how and what is going on in the spiritual realm, we find ourselves uh, despondent. We find ourselves experiencing anxiety. We find ourselves experiencing things and emotions that uh, if we just put it in the spirit, God will do it. I I'm telling you, I was at work, uh, I think it was the day before, and I said, Lord... I don't know what it is that the enemy released, but we bind it in the name of Jesus. I'm sitting in the, uh, in the job, and um, my boss, we're getting ready to wrap it up, and my boss comes out, the owner of the company, he comes in. He sent me to the pool. He said, Leah, you got to come outside. I said, what, what's going on? I'm in the in, inside of the building, and somebody hits the rental car that they gave me while my car is in the shop. I said, I'm buying that accident, demon. I, but what I'm saying is, is that even though I'm in the will of God, there are things that are transpiring that's trying to get me outside of the frame of worship that's trying to get me outside of the frame of doing the will of God because something could have said I could have gotten all wound up well I'm not to call him and tell him I'm not to cast oh the devil is a liar I begin to speak to the atmosphere say I'm about to carry out this assignment I know I'm in the will of God when the enemy tries to stop everything from coming from getting me to where I'm trying to get to because immediately I was like how am I get to the airport how am I this the only ghost said settle down he talks to us just like we, we, we talk to someone. He says, settle down. You know how he talks to you. Yes. And he says, settle down, Leah. We, it's going to be all right. Yes, I've made the necessary calls. I couldn't get in touch with who. When I got on the airport here, I began to make calls the way I needed to make it. All was well. But the enemy, if we were in the frame side where we lose sight of God, we would have found ourselves in such a disarray that we wouldn't be able to function from, from one frame to the next frame because the enemy would have gotten our minds tied up. And for some of you, it, it don't take much. It just takes a little fuse to set you off. Uh, and you got to be able to ask God to make that, either destroy the fuse or get that fuse to, to be extended just a little bit longer so that you won't flip the script every Every time something happens, when God is trying to uh, and, and make your endurance even on a greater scale, because many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. But, but, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. That's what the enemy is trying to do with the saints in this season. I've never seen a time when the saints speak such despair and such. Oh, when we went into the uh, pandemic, when they said shelter in place, I said, wait, God, you gave me some time. Oh, we're going to get on the face. 
get on the floor. We're going to study, do some study. I got some stuff I got to do for the kingdom. Yes. It was just time that I was using it yes. for the kingdom of that's God. Right, there were right. some things I needed to do for my business. I said, okay, now I'm not working on their stuff. I can work on my stuff. I began to use time wisely, yes. but I saw the saints panicking. Yes. And when we understand, when we read through the Bible, yes. when they were in Goshen and all of the plagues that came, yes. when I tell you it did not come nigh their dwelling. Yes. So whatever it is, and it cannot tell us this as Islanders, and they, they say, you always talk about that. I said, from the islands, and I will always advocate for us. I said, when we were younger, we didn't get sick. Chicken pox, all that foolishness, we didn't have none of that in school, I said, because grandma, mama had you drinking some type of bush. They had you drinking some type of something. They had you eating some type of something. Uh, that they were, uh, you, you, I had my great niece with me. She said, Auntie, do I have to keep drinking all your special teas? I said, yes. And as she drank all the special teas when they did bring her back to school, she was one of the ones that never got sick, never got COVID, never got anything because her immune system was built. What they're not telling you is that your immune system needs to be built. And if you were doing a steam bath in your nozzle, it will clear out everything inside that if you start feeling a little something, you better turn that pot on and get that towel and steam out that nostril. I'm trying to tell you, when we understand, don't forget where we came from as a people. I drink ginger. I drink elderberry, hibiscus, all of that. I mix it all up in a tea and I drink it. I drink sea moss. I put it in my coffee. I, whatever it is, I was building my immune system. And I want us to understand that even as the people of God, if we remember what God's told us in the word of God, we'll not find ourselves at every whim that's coming, every whim that's transpired. Now, I'm not saying that people have not gotten it. I know people have died from it. But we got to understand that if we keep out my prayers, are when I go into tight places, my prayers, Lord, protect my nostrils. You be the shield and the buckler over my nose, over my mouth, wherever I've got to go. Because in Texas, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. But, you know, everybody ain't honest. So there are people that are not vaccinated that are walking around with the mask. And that's each personal view. I don't, I, don't, I don't preach vaccination. I preach Jesus. And what I'm telling you is if we stay in the spirit of God, even when there was an event I was supposed to go to and the Holy Spirit said, don't you dare. And I, 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 I called the host and I said, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't be in attendance on today. If you want me to be on Zoom, I most definitely can. But I will not be able to be. I want you to know that was a hotbed for the COVID and there was many people that contracted COVID in that setting. What I'm saying to you, I'm not saying this out of fear. What I'm telling you is that if you reside in the spirit of God, he'll tell you where to go, when to go, how to go, and what to do, even in the midst of it. The saints of God have adopted the spirit of fear, and the fear is not of God. He said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. It is with the mind that we serve God. And so when we understand that what we're experiencing right now, if, if you just look at it through the eyes of the Spirit, you'll recognize God is working on something. That's right. He's we don't know what it is quite yet, but God is working on something. But I know the thoughts that I have towards you, they're thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. As he's clicking uh, that view of the different frames of our lives, we aren't in the same place that we were in our teens. We're not in the same place in our 30s. We're not, we haven't been in the same place for our 40s. Every season of life, the frame changes, but our God is never changing. Our God never changes. He stays the same. He said, my thoughts are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected and to know it means that there's a keen awareness. And when you're keenly aware that God is working on your behalf, you begin to ask questions when things start happening. God, what you doing in this? You begin to see things through a dis different lens. God, what are you doing through that? God, what are you doing through this? Because you want to make sure that you are seeing things through the lens of God. And so God is all-knowing. He's omniscient. He is everywhere at all times, at, in all frames of our lives. And when we understand that God knows everything that's going to happen, 
happened within our lives, everything that has been transpiring, and we will know that God has a plan. There's a blueprint already in motion. God is revealing. He's shining the light on different parts of your blueprint. And in this omniscience is the capacity to know everything. Psalms 147 and 5 says, Great is the Lord and abundant in strength is his understanding is infinite. The understanding of God is infinite. John, um, 1 John 3 and 20 tells us, In whatsoever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Psalms 139 and 4 says, Even before there is a word on my tongue, Behold, God knows it all together. And so I want us to understand that there are thoughts that God has towards us. He's thinking of us. He's thinking and having thoughts of us to bring us to an expected end. And in that expected end, there is an already established blueprint. That, that's why we can't be jealous of one another. That's why we can't look at one another cockeyed and cross-eyed when God starts moving on their behalf because what God will do for one, he will do for another, but it will look different because your blueprint is different. When my sister apostle called about the adventure that she has with the magazine, I said, whatever it is, I'm in. And I, I, I celebrate what God is doing in her life because I understand that when God is advancing her, he's also advancing me and he's advancing the kingdom of God. And we, when we start looking at one another's blueprint and helping each other get through the door, God can then bring us. Because we never know what door is connected to her blueprint. That's right. I never know what door is connected to Pastor Emmy's uh, blueprint. I never know what door is connected to Apostle Hazel and Pastor Hazel's blueprint. I never know what door is connected to each one of you, to Prophet Kyle. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm always encouraged when he gives the testimony of our school. He spent two years with me. As I had homework, uh, they didn't think they would get homework, uh, but he can tell you her homework ain't no joke, they said. Uh, and some of, I think we had a 20-page paper and they said, in this school? Yes, in this school, because we wanted to make sure that you have all the tools that you need. But one of the things that I love about Prophet Kyle is that he is obedient to the Spirit of God. It wasn't so much me, but to the Spirit of God that he knew that God was molding him for a purpose. And part of my blueprint was connected into the part of his blueprint. So we never know where the blueprint blueprint of our lives and who we're connected to and what illumination of what God is doing in our lives, how it impacts somebody else. But God has thoughts towards us when God thinks. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited when I think about when God thinks about me. Yes, 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 yes. He said, I have thoughts of good and not of evil. Not to bring you to an expected end. Right. That means it's already been predestined. It's already been in the works. Yeah. It's already doing it. I don't know about you, but when I was here for um, Irma with her disrespectful self and um, Maria, and they came through here, I said, Lord, now what was the purpose of a storm that that grave in the island? When I'm looking, I'm looking at green. When I left here, it was all dirt. And just branches yeah. that were there. But God restored it. But what I'm saying is, even in that, I begin to ask God, yes. God, what is it that you are trying to say to us as an island? Yeah. What is it you're trying to say? Does he send disaster? No, but in it, there's a purpose. Yes. In it, there's a purpose. And it let us know that our all sufficiency came from God. As we have to take wood and put it on, on, on top of the uh, the ledge to dry it out so we can set it on fire to keep back the uh, the gangster mosquitoes and, and be able to turn or put a pot on to boil water and to cook something. And all of the, it would let us know that our sustenance came from God. It let us know that everything that we need came from God. And it let us know that if we have not been fasting, it was a real great time to turn our plates now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. But we fasted our way into God restoring the islands to where it needs to be and he will do it further. He has thoughts towards St. Thomas. Hallelujah. When God thinks about St. Thomas, when God thinks about the Virgin Islands, he has thoughts towards us. And there is a blueprint, the reproduction of a technical drawing. And so God has already drew us and our lives in the heavenly lives. But he has a blueprint that he reveals to us to tell us where we are. And in these different lines that's on, it takes the light 
a special light in order to illuminate and show where the different parts of the doors, the windows, where are they put the electricity. All of this is drawn into the blueprint. And I want us to understand that the Spirit of God is a light, that it lights a candle. The Bible says that he lights the candle of our spirit. Yes, yes. And when he lights the candle of our spirit, when we look at our life, there's a blueprint that yes, God yes. revelates to us when we're in prayer. He illuminates to yes. us where and how yes, and what yes, we yes, should be yes, doing. Yes. I want you to know if you have a thought in your mind, a thought in your, your spirit, mm. that God put it there. And when he puts it there, if we learn to act on it, if we learn to move on it, mm. we'll begin to see that he further will do it. One time God said to me, if you can see it, you can do it. And anything God said to me, I begin to make motion and do it. They said, how do you do stuff when you don't have all the finances for I said, he didn't tell me that. He just said, if I can see it, I just need to do it. And as I go along, God would make the provision yes, for it to be done. I reminded him when I moved into the house, I said, I want this closet to look a different, because uh, you know us girls, we got our shoes, we got our stuff, and we need them all over. I said, I don't know where the money coming from. I called the people up, they said, I'm telling you, the funds were there, they said we can delay. Things work, at one day. things work the way it needed to work because it was a thought that I had. I know it's just for me because he's not going to be wearing my shoes or my wigs or any of that. But I know it's concerning me. And he said, I have thoughts towards you. And so when God thinks about it, it's not just, I want to say, it's not just about church. God's thinking about you, about your your, your job, your, 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 your um, entrepreneurship. He's thinking about your health. He's thinking about these different areas in our life. Let Let's stop confining God just to church. We are the, the people of God. When, the, when Christ lives on the inside of us, everywhere I go is church. I go to the supermarket, it's church. Why? Because the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of me. And wherever he dwells, I take him. And we can't take him everywhere. That's some of our problems. We try to take him places. And he vacates because he's not welcome there. But wherever we go, we have to understand that the Spirit of God, once he dwells on the inside of us, we are the church, even in the wilderness. We are the church, even in the pandemic. We are the church in our workplaces. We are the church in the grocery spaces. So wherever we are, that's where the Spirit of God dwells. And so if God wants to work over here, he can work over here. If he wants to work over there, he can work over there. Because we are there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so as I want to um, wrap up right now, I want to share with us that in Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11, the Lord wants us to know that there is already an expected end. And when things look like they're going in a different direction, we need to ask God, God, is this part of you? I need you to reveal to me, is this part of the blueprint? Is this where I'm supposed to be going? Am I still in the will of God? And sometimes the enemy wants to bring us where our minds start thinking that when bad things happen or things happen that are not good, that it means that God is not in it. God is in it. When there was a storm, um, when we look at even back to the times in Egypt, when he sent the different plagues, it was God that sent them. But it never came nigh our dwelling. So I want us to understand that God is doing things. Yes, he is a terrible God. Let's stop, let's stop acting like God is this little wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. You know that commercial they have, they talk about the garbage bags and they say wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. God is not wimpy. He is strong. And a lot of times we have painted him as this kumbaya God. But I want you to know that when you get a hold of the terribleness of God, it's that there's something to be in the hands of an angry God. So we need you to understand that the same way that he is gracious the same way that he loves us is the same way that he is a terrible God he will move things out of the way on our behalf he moved the fish all that was in the uh, in the ocean and parted the Red Sea in order to get his people from one place to the next and for those of you that have that Red Sea experience right now I want you to understand that we serve a God that can make a way yes, in the right. middle That's of right. the Red Sea right. Right. to get you to where it needs to be. And we're standing to our feet. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And we're playing something. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want us to understand that Jeremiah 29 reminds us that God is thinking about us. He's having thoughts about us. Thoughts of good and not of evil. And God wants to encourage you that you are in an open heaven. And in this open heaven, there's already a blueprint and it's already there. God is expressing some things to you. He's eardropping some things on your behalf. 
And I don't know who needs an airdrop on today. And when they airdrop something, they bring it up into one of those military vehicles and uh, they just tend to throw it out at the right coordinates. And it might have a parachute on it, but it gets down and it gets to the right spot. And for some of you, you've been waiting on God to move on your behalf. And God said, I'm moving. Some things he's airdropping. Some things he's bringing into place on your behalf. But I want you to also understand that for some of you, there are changes that are needed in the way that you do, the way that you worship, the way that you uh, entreat God. There's a change that God needs more dedication out of your life. A lot of times we think that by just coming to church, it means that we belong to God. But you need the spirit of God dwelling on the inside. You need to read the word of God. You need to find yourself in worship and God will do the rest. Uh, but it is our job as the fivefold leadership, uh, the fivefold ministry, to be able to lead you and guide you to where God wants you to be, to find your airdrop location, to find your airdrop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God is opening doors that no man can shut even in this season. Hallelujah. For some of you, it's been rough. I see financial difficulty that has been a part of these past several months. Things have been really tight. And it seems like God comes through at the very last moment. You've been saying, God, couldn't you have come a little bit sooner? He said, no, I was working on your faith. I was elevating your faith to a different place because I needed you to believe me for me not for what you saw but for me and I hear the Spirit of God saying that in this season he wants you to lean even the more on him and I was speaking to someone that came and asked to be mentored within this last week and the Spirit of God said to her and he's in um, sharing with me to share again sometimes we have to unlearn what we learn in order to learn how God is moving in this season because some of us came from very traditional starchy backgrounds that were real dry and had nothing to do with God we had church but had nothing to do with God and sometimes you have to unlearn what you've learned so that you can learn and flow in the Spirit of God. In this season, wherever the Spirit of God listed, that's where we need to move. And the only way that you can stay in that place is through worship. I'm telling you, whenever you get up on a Sunday morning, whenever you get up every morning, find a place to worship. Find a time to worship. Don't let my sister be the only one worshiping in the building. She's here to lead us and guide us in. But I want you to know that when you have a worship life, it's almost like lighting that fire. And it's lit when you come to the Spirit of God. You come into the house of God. I need us to understand that our worship, our praise, is what's going to usher us into that next season. It's a time of worship. It's a time where the word is predominant. It's a time of it's a time where God will give us strategy. Mm, hallelujah. My back was turned, but who is it that's the attorney? I hear the Spirit of God saying that within the next 12 months, there are people that are going to seek out a new type of service, and it has something to do with land. There are people who are going to seek out it. I hear you. There's something going on in the land about properties where people are, are scared or about to lose their land. And the Spirit of God said He's getting ready to give you a strategy that will infiltrate what the government is trying to do on the behalf of the people. Whatever this product is that you're going to offer, this service, and I say product is a service that you're going to offer to these people, the advertisings. 
And people are going to seek you out because they will need what it is that you're about to offer. There's an injustice that's getting ready to sweep through the land and it has something to do with properties. It's a strategy that they're implementing. But God is about to give you the strategy from heaven to help the people. And when they come, God said, as you serve them, the words in your mouth are going to not only increase their faith, but it's going to increase even them concerning wanting to be a part of God. This is a strategic thing God is about to do, and he's going to use you as an agent, and he's going to compensate you well for the services that you're about to do. Hallelujah. Times of famine are coming to a close. Hallelujah. Times of lack is coming to a close. God said, I had you hidden in the cleft for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Apostle, there's something you didn't share with me that God showed you. And God said, execute fast and expeditiously. Whatever it is that, you, that God shared with you, it seemed like, God, like, what, 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 what are you trying to do with me, God? What, what is up with this? God said, I've already made provisions for it. And there are people, he said, for this one, you won't even have to ask. They're going to come. And they're coming because, he said, you've already suffered a while for this. But now is the fruitfulness of what you've already labored for that God is about to bring to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It seems like, and I'm your friend, so there's some things I do know and I declare that because some things I have knowledge of. But I hear the Spirit of God saying, that even in the various movements that you've been having to make, God said, I have been strategically moving you around. It seemed like when you were in Victorville, there was a plot that the enemy had against you. That it seemed like even what you would put your hands to do, it seemed like before it would come to fruition, it would come to naught. And when you moved out of that place, God began to show you something different that started blowing your mind. But God said, I'm about to move you in different areas that you didn't think that you belonged. He said, I moved you out of one spot, but I'm, I'm moving you in other areas. And God said, as I revealed to you, he said, don't worry about it. He said, I got you. And I'm saying this because I hear the Spirit of God. In times that I can't hear my radio, you know who that is. At that time of departure, God said, I'm going to release some things from you, and I'm going to release some things to you. He said, I'm honoring this sacrifice right now. It seemed like you've given up much, and you were wondering, God, I don't know what you're doing with me. God said, it's all a part of my blueprints. It's a part of the plan. It's a part of the plan. And here's the Spirit of God saying, stop pleading with your sisters and brothers about what needs to be done concerning mama. God says, work it out the best that you can. He said it as well. There's a transfer that's going to transpire between your mother and you before her departure. And in that, God said, I have made provision for you. Hallelujah. 
God said, I'm coming to see about you. You have some prayers before the Lord. And you're so unselfish in your prayers. You're praying for everybody and about everything. And you're waiting for God. And some things it looks like it's going backwards. And it's not going in the right direction that you've been praying for. But I hear the Spirit of God said that I'm coming to see about you. He's moving some things around to bless you in a way that you've not been blessed before. God said that you have been the wind beneath the wings of some people that's in your life. You've been in their lives and you've been praying. I see the mantle of intercession on you. And God said, I'm getting ready to elevate that to a new level. And as you intercede, you'll begin to see results transpire just like that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And even in your body, we pray right now that God would align what is out of alignment. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Sis in the back with the blonde hair. Starting to, yes, you're looking right at me. Yes, you. God said, I'm getting ready to bring you out of hiding. And I'm getting ready to bring you to your appointed place. There's a season that God is about to put you in. It's almost a, a time of silence. But it'll be a time of intense prayer. And intense word. But God said, I'm about to shift you to where you should be because you've been running. God said, I understand the blueprint. And time I said that I've already have in place for you. But I've got to bring you out of hiding. But there's a preparation period that God is getting ready to put you in. God put you in. And it's, it's going to entail some cutting. And when God cuts at us, it doesn't feel too well. But I want you to know it's for our good. God is preparing you for where you are. Have already been predestined to be. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Pastor Emmy, there's some doors that I see open. I saw one door open, but it's almost like in the cartoons, the one door open and you see the doors just open one at a time, right immediately as the one open. There are doors that God is opening on your behalf, not just for ministry, but I hear, I hear God from an entrepreneurial problem standpoint, that God is opening doors for you, hallelujah. These doors come with a massive, I see, uh, big wigs, so to speak, behind the doors. These are people of great influence that God is about to bring you to. And it's almost like they didn't even know that you have what you have. And when they came, they were like, oh my God, you were here all the time? But God said, I'm opening doors on your behalf. And these doors, he said, they're doors of good. Ah. There's some people that you've helped in previous seasons. You didn't require a dime for them from them. You just helped them because it was in your heart. And they burned you. They took you and your help for granted. But God said even in that you still responded with a godly response. Even at times that you wanted to go ballistic, you had to remind yourself, girl, you a woman of God. You better snap back in place. But God said, I am getting ready to recompense is coming your way. I stopped worrying a long time ago when people did me dirty. Because God has always, I don't even talk about it. I don't call them haters. I, I, I don't even, I just leave it in the hands of God. And I begin to see God working. I remember one time I got real beside myself. I said, Lord, you over there blessing them, and I'm over here struggling with what they, I had, I was having a fit. And the Lord never answered, he just let me go off on my tangent. He's such a gracious and loving God. Yeah. And then I happened to went somewhere, wasn't, it, wasn't, wasn't thinking about them when my, and the Lord revealed to me all that had been transpired. What I was seeing was a smoke screen on Facebook. But what God was doing was behind the scenes. And when God revealed it, it wasn't that in my spirit or in my heart, I was like, yeah, sick of God. But I began to pray for them. That's how I knew I was healed. Because I began to pray 
for there for them for what God was doing hallelujah because I understand that it does me no good to pray against them when God said pray for them that despitefully use you the word it comes in play in every area hallelujah glory be to God man of God he's standing in the blue he's sitting in the blue would you stand yeah you're looking back at you yes many times you feel like God forgot about you but God said I didn't forget about you I hear God saying he's about to bless you for some things that you've done in secret God said I'm about to bless you openly not just you but you and your family God said I'm about to bless you openly you provided for people that were not even your children provided for people that you didn't even really know and I'm just seeing things in the spirit but you provided for others and didn't even think it because you have a fatherly spirit and God said I am about to bless you beyond your years for the sacrifices that you and your family have made I'm getting ready to bless you in places and areas of your life that you didn't even submit to God but God said because you given to me in a way that you didn't even think or look back over it. God said, I'm about to do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Prophet. 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 Hallelujah. I see doors that God is getting ready to open for you. Not just on this island, but I see it in islands going down the chain. There are some connections that you have already in God that they have not seen you in the mantle that you walk in now and God said he is revealing and speaking to them about you now and I hear the spirit of God said that there are doors that are getting ready to open for you I see doors in the Bahamas I see doors in Antigua I see doors in St. Martin and I see doors in St. Kitts but I see you going in and God using you your prophetic mantle and your prophetic declarations. There are doors that God is opening unto you. And God has given you keys to nations as you unlock them in the spirit. God is about to unravel some things, a created revelation to you in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Dawn. God said there's something that you have very uh, particular or specific before him. You've got very specific details that you have before God. And it's almost like you dropped it, you, you prayed about it, you dropped it, and you said, God, I'm leaving it right there. And whatever that prayer request is, God said, it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. And I want to caution you because there's some things that's going to transpire before the revelation of it being completed that is going to look like it's not done. But I want you to keep saying it's done. And I want to encourage you because it might not be a house, but I was in the middle two weeks before I got ready to close on my house. And the lender through uh, Fannie Mae fell through. And I said, Lord, what's going on? And I told the lender, I said, whatever you have to do, make it work. So she came back and they came back with all these post-pandemic requirements that are now in play. They wanted six months worth of the mortgage. They wanted this, that, and the other. I said, Jesus, I don't know how this is going to be. Some things I had already. But the enemy started whispering in my ear, you ain't going to get that house. They going to close. You ain't going to get this, that, that. I began to speak. There's a song that C.C. Wyman sings. Believe for it. Believe for it. I had that on replay. And that song stuck in my spirit. And I began to believe for it. And as I began to believe for it, things were looking kind of grim. And I was like, okay, God, I believe for it. I know things are not working right, but I believe for it. It was two days before the closing. And what it was is I was paying my bills on time, but the car more the, the car people were reporting it late. Y'all check y'all credits because these people is crooked. Any which way, yeah, that, that's a plug in. And, and so I went and I, I two days before. And I said, Lord, I need you to move whatever they put on there so that this can go through. I want you to know it was the night before the closing 
and the, uh, the, the lender called, she said, we're clear for closing. We're clear for closing. She said, I expected you to shout and, and, and do all of that. I said, I, I'm excited, but there's one thing I'm waiting on. When we got to the, the call from the title people, and they said, be here at one. I said, now I can rejoice. Because <laughs> you got to understand the process. And I was rejoicing. But I understand even though we were clear for closing, I needed that call from the title company. Once I got that, I dressed up like I was going to a ball. And I walked in there dressed up. They said, shit a shot. And I got in there and said, you, you, you real dressed up for a clothes? And I said, yes. And I sat down and I signed those papers because God, with me believing for it, said, unless you believe, you've got to believe for it. And I believe God and I closed on the 29th of July. When I got the keys two hours later, I walked in, all I could do was worship. I turned the house into a sanctuary because I understood it was God that did it. Since I hear God say, I can move the impossible. I am moving the impossible. Hallelujah. There's some impossible situations that are, are before you, but I hear God say, I move the impossible. I move the impossible. Hallelujah. And you know what I love about God? The hearts of kings is in his hands. And I like to remind God about that when there's someone who thinks they're big and bad to move the will of God. I said, your heart is in the hands of God. And I believe for it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. For those of you that know me, I don't speak nothing that God don't say, and I don't push past where he says. But I feel this prophetic from the individual prophetic ministry lifting. Oh, I forgot one. Hallelujah. Apostle, I don't know. I see a school. I know you've been doing classes, but I see a school. And I see you as an interim, uh, I see you as an interim uh, professor on the local I don't know where the school is here, but I see you doing an interim crown teaching in that capacity. But I also see a school. I see you uh, mentoring and teaching. And as you're doing this, I hear God saying he's getting ready to send people that are actually coming. Uh, he's going to give you what you need for accreditation. Because I see people coming from other neighboring islands and finding lodging here, and they're coming to take the classes. But God is doing something. It's not by happenstance that God, God said, when I elevated you, I elevated the ministry. And God said, there are people, I, I see this particular woman, I don't know who she is, um, but she doesn't even live here. I see her relocating here because she's been watching you online, and it is her desire to live on the island. But she's coming, and she's coming fully loaded and fully equipped. God is about to use or allow her gifts to be used even here to allow things to elevate. There's a difference. Even I noticed there was a difference in worship, a difference in the atmosphere. But God is about to shift some things even on a greater level. Because God said, I'm getting ready to use the ministry as a beacon of light. You're getting ready to be a lighthouse, not just to those on the island, but there are people that are watching from afar that they're looking. There's some people, whatever it is that you're setting up, let it be where they can connect on a Zoom basis. Uh, they pay their tuition. I, I am an advocate for you. As you mentioned, I have a school. Let me say this, because sometimes I find in the church, we have a warped vision or a, a, a warped What's the word I want to use? Concept of money. Yes. Money is money. The Bible yes. says it's the answer to all things. Yes. So I need some answers. When I pray about money, I say, Lord, I need some answers. But that's what the Bible, I pray the scriptures. The scripture says money is the answer. We get stuck on saying that the root of, uh, that uh, the love of money 
The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. But people say the love of money. The Bible never said that. The Bible says the love of it. Because when you have an obsession with something, you will go willing to do things that are ungodly in order to obtain it. But the money for us, that's just currency. But we have a greater currency that's faith. But in this earth, you can't walk in to the store and say, I got faith, can I get that bag of bread? Yeah, I got faith, can I get those keys to that car? We need our faith to transcend to the currency of the land, which is money. And we need to have a right relationship with money. We don't obsess about money, but we need money in order to transact in this realm. And I used to offer my classes for free and not everybody were willing to, to do what was necessary. They were like, you know, I won't go to class today because I ain't paying for it. There were people that I offered the opportunity if they become in a, a, a lifetime or a, they support the ministry on a monthly basis, subscriber, on a monthly basis they could take the classes. There was only two persons that went in and were faithful with it. Everyone else got charge of tuition. But I want you to know it's not just us. When we have accredited schools, we have to charge a tuition in order for it to be legit. It's a trend. Again, it's a transference. So there's a tuition. I said all that to say there's a tuition that will come with this school. And it will allow you to bring in interim professors as well to teach on different levels. But God says, I'm getting ready to set you up. Because there are plans that you have for God that God has placed in your mind. But even when God placed them in your mind, it's sometimes difficult trying to get the undergirding of people because they can't see beyond just coming to church and going home. They can't see ministry. But God said, I'm getting ready to, as you're teaching in this, one of the classes I see you teaching is the, uh, 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 the the ins and outs of ministry. I see you teaching on uh, what it takes to, to uh, orchestrate in ministry. I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to set things up, but I see a school that's getting ready to be used. It will connect with other ministries. And afterwards, we, 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 can, we can talk afterwards, hallelujah. But God is doing something new in this season, hallelujah. We're not un unprecedented time. Hallelujah. He said, I have plans concerning you. Hallelujah. Do you, I know you sold from yesterday, but do you sold for other people? I hear God saying to open the avenue because that is where your money is. There are people who have vacated the, the island and there are people who are looking for good seizures. My mama was one because my mom used to sew here. But when she left, all her customers are still hanging out there. I don't know where they went to. But God said there are people on the island that are looking for a good seamstress. And you know what it is? When we wear what we sew, we advertise everywhere we go. And people see the work. And when they don't look, everybody remember the, um, that episode with Theo on um, back in the day with uh, the Cosby when Denise decided to sew him a shirt and the, the sleeve was down here. And when people can see that you wear your clothes and they look like clothes they get out the store, they hire you. God said the money is in your hands. It's in your hands. And you know what? I stopped worrying about who they want to pay for my services. I'm not, this is not an option. That's right. I don't haggle with people over prices. This is what it costs. This is what it is. You either want it or you don't. Because you know what? People get what they pay for. They do. Someone haggled on me. She wanted a wedding dress made. I told her what the price was. Because she didn't bring me a pattern. She wanted it from sight. And all this beating and all of this. And I gave her the price. Oh my God, that's so much. I said, would you tell Vera Wang that? It's a customized dress. Well, she went somewhere and ended up having to pay twice. Because the person who took her fabric jacked up the dress. It was unwearable. So at the last minute, she had to go to the store and 
and spend another set of money in order to get a dress that she didn't want, that didn't look like what she needed, rather than just pay for it up front. I don't know, maybe it comes with maturity. They say when you get close to 50 and I'm almost there, there's certain things that your filter breaks, you know, so you say what's on your mind, you know, you start not worrying about a lot of stuff. I don't worry about that stuff no more. God has already, yes, it started. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, I say, God, you gave me these talents, and I use it for your glory. And they also, he said, I give you witty ideas to get well. Sometimes we think it's this great grand thing, and sometimes it's a little thing. I have a good friend of mine, she started making tea, and she started marketing it because had all, she used the properties that were helping people that were sick. This one person, the Lord told her not to charge people for the tea. She would give them a container this big, and the Lord said they would bless her for it. She would give him, this person gave her $50 for that tea. She sent a half a gallon to the next person, they gave her $150. To the point that she didn't need the work because the tea started supplying. A wit, witty ideas to get us well. Sometimes we think it's this big thing. And we start talking about money, people start thinking it ain't gone. But he told them to get, go to the fish and get what you need out of the fish. We don't apply the principles of the word of God. Can I tell you, Johnson & Johnson, you know how he became a, a great uh, household name? Someone once told him when he first started to start tithing on what he made. That man don't even know God, but he understood the concept of giving 10%. You look in your house, you got something in there that's Johnson & Johnson that you bought. And that's how he prospered. I'm saying that to say the world is using the principles that God gave in his word, and they are prospering. And we are living from place to place, from dying to dying, and wondering why God is not doing what he said he would do. He's saying, I'm wondering why you won't go into the word and find the principles that I've already given you in order to prosper you. It is his will that we represent him well. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you for your grace as we're standing. Father, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy, for your loving kindness. We thank you for your word that you have thoughts towards us that are thoughts of good and not of evil and that we are standing and sitting under an open heaven meaning that we're getting ready to see manifestation of your word manifestation of what you've spoken over us and on our lives god allow your prophetic word oh god to be with us allow your word to run us down chase us down allow your your prosperity your spirit oh god to run us down prosper us in our spirits oh god prosper our spiritual man prosper us in our worship oh god hallelujah cause us to invest in our spiritual man god that we would grow into further into what we have been called to do we all have a calling oh god and god we believe for it even right now tear down every stronghold that comes up against us. Every witch and every warlock that have sent out a decree and declare, God, we render it destroyed in the name of Jesus. And God, we rebuke that spooky Christianity, oh God, that's creeping over the land. But let there be clarity of thought, clarity of spirit, even in this hour. God, we thank you and we give your name the praise. God, you have thoughts towards us when you think. God, continue thinking about us. God, we embrace your thoughts, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring us to an expected end. Bless our going and bless our goings out and our coming in. God, we pray right now that you would increase us. In the name of Jesus. Where there's love, we pray for plenty. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
God, we bless your name. God, we pray, oh God, for those that are on the verge of losing their jobs. God, we pray right now that you would give them witty ideas to get wealth. God, we pray for open doors in the name of Jesus. Bless your believers. Bless your children. Open up doors, oh God. It's and open heaven in the name of oh God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And amen. Now back into the hands of Apostle Hazel. Hallelujah. Thank you as we lift the bread. It represents God's bro Jesus' broken body and Calvary. That whatever is broken in our lives, in our relationship, in our spirituality, we are able to mend it, fix it, put it back together again. Now we do this by faith. We discern it by faith. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. Amen. Take it as one family, worshiping God in the spirit and in truth, forgiving one another. In Jesus' name, amen. You can give it a little shake if it is that open. Represents your shed blood on Calvary's tree. Your word declares without the shedding of blood there is the cleansing or remission for our sins. We discern what we are doing and we drink it. We come against any sickness, disease, and infirmity in our body, every cyst, anything that is out of line with your word and your calling for our lives. And we drink it, we experience healing in our bodies now. And we worship God together, living in a spirit of unity, forgiving one another and we live in love as a body of Christ. Let's bring it together. Praise God. Can we say praise God? Praise God. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for your blood. Just as your hands and Lord, we thank you. Lord, we, we thank, thank you for your blood. For your blood. Your blood that shed from Calvary for just for us, we pray. Yes. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. And there's a hallelujah. And someone will come. Just hold on to it. We'll pass it down. Just wait until they come and you put it directly inside the container, the waste container. And as we continue, we're going to receive uh, this morning's um, tithes and offering. Amen. And our special uh, love gift for our speaker. And you can put everything on that same envelope. If you're in need of an envelope, just lift your hands and someone will wait for you. You do a double duty. Amen. You have a hand up front here. If you'd like to get an envelope, can you lift your hands? And uh, we have about three hands, four hands, five hands. You're going to come. We just worship you. Amen. Well, we're going to go. We're going to close at home. We also can get yourself prepared for 
Amen. says God is able to give you much more than this. And so we normally say that. Can you say with me? God is able, God is able to, give to give you much more than this. Much more than this. Amen. Whatever you're going to release out of your hands right now, God is able to give it back to you. Yes. Press down, shake it together. We call our name and say God is able yes. to give oral hands up much more than this. Call your name and say God is able yes. to give call your name Call my name, I'm gonna get all of it, but call yourself God is able to do what? Oh that he is much more than it. This. Anyway, so you can write out your checks to Global Life Church. If you want to give online, you can go to Facebook to Oral Hayes in the church and you can pay via PayPal. Or you can go back in the back. There is a uh, uh, banking system in the back where you can just swipe your card and it does not stay with us. So don't keep your numbers, but you can use it in the back. wherever you're bringing us and just send it in an offering oh God, as, as God has blessed you and we are praying that God is able to cause grace to abound back to you if you're, if you're in the audience and also listening and you are blessed by the ministry of the word you can also send in a donation and just put for our speaker amen and in the house just spit on the envelope it's a designated area for our speaker Amen. We thank you for that. If you are through the usher, is coming up, and you could also give it to place in the basket. Father God, your word declares that God, you are able to give every one of us in the building or just outside the building, those in the back and lot around the house, those watching us online, you are able to give us much more than this. And so, Father, we pray, God, your blessing upon the offering, blessing upon those who are giving into the offering. Father, your word declares that you're going to give it multiplied back into their lives 1,000 times now within this life. There are some people who have given and they have gotten um, a doctor's a report about some stubborn sickness, disease that they cannot find in their bodies. But as they gave, that disease is lifted 
and you view with us, we appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Let's put your hands up and together for those who are bringing us. Amen. We really need to and tell them how they were blessed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. for his tender mercies, for his loving kindness. Father God, we honor you today. And we thank you for coming by here and seeing about your people. We thank you and we praise you, God, for your glory being revealed, Father. You are showing us your glory like never before. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you for the rhema and the logos word, my God. We thank you, Lord God, that a word will not die in our hearts or in our spirit, but God, that it will come alive even the more, Father God, to the end that we will give you glory, honor, and praise, God, that we will be a walking testimony of your goodness in the land of the living. And now we say unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless until that day, to the only wise God, to the only living God, to the only true God, to the only holy, mighty God. We bless you, we praise you, we honor you, and we continually bow before you. And everyone say in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Have a blessed day in the Holy Ghost. Amen.